My name is Gerardo Poli. I'm an emergency veterinarian, director at the Animal Emergency Service here in Brisbane in Australia, and also the author of the Mini Vet Guide to Companion Animal Medicine. I commonly get asked, why did I become a veterinarian? And I can honestly say that I didn't want to become a veterinarian when I finished high school. It's not something that was even on my radar. What I did is I went out and I worked in various jobs for five years. Then I realised that my passion was understanding things, learning how things worked. So I found myself in the human side of things, doing anatomy and physiology. And then what happened is I transitioned into veterinary medicine because I felt that there would be more variety. I could be the medicine clinician, I could be the surgery, I could do the surgeries, I could do dermatology, I could be the one looking down a microscope. I'm very happy where I am and where my career has led me to. I went to the University of Queensland and I thought it was a great school. There was heaps of support, lots of practical experience and really down to earth lecturers and professors. One of the challenging aspects of vet school is not just the duration of the course, but also the content. There's quite a lot to learn. One of the things I found quite challenging was actually the degree of rote learning that was involved with actually doing vet science. And there's no other way around it apart from just sitting down and knuckling it out and just studying and studying and studying. I was president of the University of Queensland Vet Student Association, so in fourth year that actually added quite a lot of pressure and extra responsibilities upon what I was already doing with my personal study. But I felt that actually that helped me develop um, relationships with industry and help me understand the importance of communicating, communicating with clients, communicating with industry representatives and fine-tuning th that skill in and then bringing that across to when I was a veterinarian. So taking on extra responsibilities in student associations, in committees, definitely think it's worthwhile and worth the, the, the time invested in it. So I often get asked, how did the mini vet guide start? And to be honest, it, it started when I was at uni and there was just too much to know. There's too much to know, like sometimes it was just the small tips, hints and tips that I really wanted to know that were dispersed throughout, you know, readings and textbooks and so forth. So what I decided to do was sort of collaborate that and, and condense that and only really pick out the, the relevant and concise information that I needed for when I was going through uni, going through prac work. And so what, it, what happened was that it started off as 70 pages and then turned out into about 360. So it, it's grown in size and it's grown in depth and it's not there to replace textbooks or replace specialist advice, but it's there to, to help students, to help veterinarians who are just graduated, help them develop a diagnostic pathway, help them develop the management plan. If they need more information that's not contained in the book, then they need to look elsewhere, textbooks or call specialists. But it's just there to get them out of a tight spot and be easily portable and easily carried around wherever you go. I commonly get asked, what does my work involve? And what are my responsibilities here at Animal Emergency Service? And to be honest, they're quite varied. I still am a primary clinician, so I'll see patients and I'll take care of patients that come through our doors. I also play quite a, a large supportive role in terms of mentoring new veterinarians that come into this field of, of veterinary medicine, so the field of emergency and critical care. We also provide clinical support on shift, so vets who have questions or um, uh, want to discuss cases or check ultrasounds or check x-rays or even assist in surgery, so I'll, I'll provide that kind of backup and support. The other thing I do as a director is not only help guide the direction of the company, but also heavily involved in the continuing professional development, not only our vets, but also vets in the wider community as well. So I find that incredibly rewarding as what I really like doing is actually sharing knowledge and watching people do things they've never done before. I've been an emergency veterinarian since 2010 here at Animal Emergency Service. And what do I like about my job as an emergency veterinarian? I think it's the, the variety, the variety of the cases that come through and also the fact that when I treat patients here in this hospital, they're generally the sickest of the sickest, so I have a really big impact on what happens to that patient within a short period of time. So when not it's a patient with a pericardial effusion or a patient in congestive heart failure, I can stabilise them, sometimes get them home in 12 hours. And seeing that transition of that patient through our hospital from critically ill 
to walking out the door is actually something that I find incredibly rewarding and I suppose that is the key thing I think I like about being an emergency veterinarian is I can have a dramatic impact. What advice can I offer graduates or well, vets who are about to graduate and enter clinical practice? First I suppose is picking your first clinic. You don't have to pick the perfect clinic the first time around because you don't even know if that's going to be if that clinic's going to suit you and the direction you want to head in. But you want to find somewhere where there is appropriate level of mentorship and also somewhere where there's structured learning. So someone who is there that has trained other vets before, but also ready to help guide you through and provide resources for you and your continuing learning. The second thing is perspective. So you will make mistakes and there'll be days when you leave the hospital thinking as if you're just the worst vet ever. But you've got to put that in, into perspective. Everyone makes mistakes. The most important thing is what you learn from that and what you can take from that and move on. In terms of if you feel like as if you're the worst vet ever, yeah, like I feel like that too sometimes. But you got, don't spread that, don't make that mean that you are the worst vet ever all the time, okay? So you can have a bad day, doesn't mean it's a bad year. The third thing is a systematic approach. So when you become experienced, you can somewhat use pattern matching, not that I recommend that, but you have experience behind you which helps guide your, your clinical decisions and the way you approach patients. When you've just graduated, it's really important you have a systematic approach. So make sure you look at everything because more often than not, when you miss things, it's not because you didn't know, it's because you didn't look. The final tip, I suppose, would be be coachable. You don't need to go out there and prove everything you know. A humble veterinarian, a humble new graduate is much easier to coach and mentor than one who's out there trying to prove that they, they, they know everything. So work with your team, work with your nurses, work with your, your more experienced veterinarians and be open and coachable. And that's about, I suppose, the, the top four tips that I can think of.